The words affordable and ITX build usually aren't in the same sentence, but today we're gonna make it happen. By carefully picking out the right parts and shopping from the right places, I managed to keep this Fractal Design Ridge-based PC right at $1,000, and it turned out to be a super capable 1440p gaming machine. For ITX builds, that ITX tax on parts like the motherboard and SFX power supply are real, but we still got the mission done, so here's how I did it. Starting with the CPU, here's where I first saved a ton of money because instead of going with a $180 Ryzen 5 7600, I went with the $115 Ryzen 5 7500F from AliExpress. Shopping from here could of course increase the risk a little bit, but as long as you buy from a seller with a ton of five-star reviews, and when it shows that they sold a lot of the specific units of whatever you're trying to buy, you shouldn't have any issues. Truth is, I've purchased literally hundreds of CPUs from there over the years, and I honestly can't even remember if we ever bought one that came broken. By only spending $115 on the CPU, and possibly less by the time you're watching this video, that allows us to not make sacrifices elsewhere and still end end up with a powerful 1440p graphics card. Before that though, next up we have the motherboard and this is the ASRock Phantom Gaming A620i Lightning Wi-Fi. You may be noticing that this is the same combination that I used from my previous affordable ITX build inside the ultra tiny five liter case and you'd be correct because we're recycling a few parts from that project. This A620 Lightning Wi-Fi was simply just the cheapest ITX AM5 motherboard that I could find and it usually sits around $120. There are a couple of other features though that I like about it which are on the screen now. With smaller form factor builds, the motherboard is one of those places that has the ITX tax and usually jacks up the price of the build, but honestly, this $120 price point isn't too terrible. What's also not terrible is today's video sponsor, Corsair, and specifically their new K70 Core TKL keyboards. They have both a wired and wireless version here, and they're about the same except for connectivity and the included wrist rest with the wireless version. Now, I'm gonna cut to the chase here. This keyboard has several features that they want me to show off, such as the multifunctional rotary dial, gaming performance mode, and the IQ customization, but what I think they absolutely nailed is the sound. These are second gen MLX red switches and I did a typing test on my previous live stream and you can see here the kind of ratings that people were giving the sound out of 10. I personally don't think Corsair has ever made a gaming keyboard sound this clean, creamy, and brain itch satisfying. The two layers of sound dampening material are definitely getting the job done and if you wanna check out these boards for yourself, I'll have them linked down in the description. All right, getting back to the build, here's the RAM which is the Silicon Power Zenith Gaming 2x16GB 6000 DDR5 kit with the CL rating of 30. That's all exactly what I look for when it comes to DDR5 sticks, especially when I'm trying to keep the cost down, and these low profile sticks fit nicely and snug underneath the CPU cooler. And speaking of which, that's the Thermalrite AXP 120X67 ARGB, which costs just over 30 bucks over on Amazon. The Fractal Ridge can support coolers up to 70 millimeters in height, and the X67 in the cooler's name is for 67 millimeters, so we're using about all that we can. The name also has ARGB in there, but I didn't even plug that connector in because we won't really be able to see anything, and I think it would look a little tacky having a small amount of RGB light coming through these case holes. But now that the motherboard is prepped, which it already was from the last ITX build, here's the remaining parts that I've never used before and I just bought. For the power supply, this is the Cooler Master V SFX Gold, which is ATX 3.0 certified and 850 watts. That's more than enough for what we need and it's actually rated tier A on the PSU tier list, which you love to see, but since it only cost $100 brand new on Amazon, it was an easy pick. SFX power supplies are also part of that ITX tax that I was talking about, so $100 for this is actually some pretty solid value. If you can't find this one in stock, just remember to go to zttbuildhelp.com, click on the PSU tier list, and only choose models that are tier A, B, or sometimes C if you're doing a budget build. If it's not on that list, that means it wasn't independently reviewed by the PSU experts, and although it may be a good model, I just wouldn't trust it. And by the way, there's a ton of other useful features on zttbuildhelp.com, like the GPU comparison charts and the SSD master list. I'm literally using my own website for all of these builds, and it's like the portal that I go back to for every project. I'd recommend bookmarking it. Moving along, next up, let's talk about the case, which we already know is the Fractal Ridge. This isn't brand new or anything as it came out a couple of years ago, but it struggled with some stock issues in the beginning, which is why I never covered it. Now that it's casually sitting on Amazon and Newegg every day of the week for about 130 bucks, I figured now was the time to test it out, and honestly, I'm really glad that I did. If you wanna watch the full step-by-step -step building process, then check out this live stream VOD on the YouTube channel. I built all of these PCs on my live streams if you didn't already know, and yeah, this was a fun one. The motherboard sits here in the bottom right upside down, and what's interesting is this horizontal bar that goes across the entire case. 
case. That's attached to a GPU riser board. Can't really call it a riser cable. And you remove this bar first, drop in the motherboard, and then reinstall that bar to seat the GPU riser board in there. Hopefully that made sense. Then on the top side is this new GPU slot that you'll use, but you'll actually also need this little height adapter thing, which I've never seen before, but it's pretty self-explanatory. This gives the GPU just enough height so that it lines up with everything else. And then the GPU has this huge open compartment to itself. And while we're up here, the GPU is in fact the XFX Swift 210 RX 7700 XT. For a true 1440p gaming PC, this is some of the absolute best value that you can find in terms of straight up price to performance. And we'll see in the benchmarking section soon just how well it pairs with the 7500F. While it's in this case, there's two 140 millimeter fans up here in the GPU chamber. And these basically just intake a ton of fresh air and then just blast it on the GPU. I don't anticipate any sort of cooling issues whatsoever. And the temps are probably gonna look pretty good. Also in this case, in the bottom left is where the power supply goes. This was all pretty basic. And the only tiny issue I ran into was that I couldn't plug in the four plus four CPU power cable until I loosen the case's power extension cable up here at the top. Definitely not a big deal at all, but with ITX builds, you do have to exercise some finger dexterity to plug things in. Other than that though, building inside this fractal ridge was pretty standard and it didn't require a whole lot of tinkering like some ITX cases do. It's certainly on the easier end for small form factor builds if you're willing to give it a shot. All in all, here's what the final parts list is looking like and you can see that we're just a touch over the $1,000 target price and I'm still in shock by what we accomplished here. I have links to all of this down in the description, by the way. This is not only going to be a pure 1440p gaming powerhouse for a thousand bucks, which is already good, but it's also an ITX build, which usually destroys the budget, but not today. Now it's time to jump into the benchmark. So let's see what this PC can do. We're gonna be sticking to 1440p for every game and we'll start with Fortnite and with pro settings, we got a very solid 261 average FPS. Those 1% lows even stayed up there at 136, which is a combination of both the CPU and GPU working. So this is a pretty good result. For a more demanding game, we have Starfield and in 1440p with high settings, we got just over that target mark at 65 FPS. Now, personally, I'd rather play this towards low to medium settings to get that FPS number a bit higher, but I thought it was important to emphasize that this 7700 XT can play even the demanding titles like this one above 60 with high settings. We did struggle a bit on X Defiant though, and I do have full confidence this PC would have run the game well, but man, we couldn't even get into a game because it's officially dead. I thought we at least had a few more benchmarking runs with this one, but it appears that those days are unfortunately over. Oh no! We'll have to settle for Black Ops 6, which was honestly probably the final blow to X Defiant because it's actually pretty good. And in 1440p with ultra settings, using the benchmarking tool, we got 108 average FPS. Here's the rest of the games that we tested. And yeah, I've said this so many times already, but the RX 7700 XT is some of the absolute best value that you can get for 1440p gaming right now. And it can handle any game in high or ultra settings. When you pair that with the Ryzen 5 7500F, which is in a similar boat of providing the best bang for your buck AM5 experience, this combination works out quite well. You have to be willing to shop on AliExpress to grab one, at least here in the United States. But as long as you do your research and buy from a trusted seller, you'll be good to go. This build is simply just a ton of value for the $1,000 price point. But if you're looking for a different way to do it, then be sure to check out zttbuildhelp.com. Here's my totally free build guide templates with links, explanations, and alternatives to everything you need just to copy them. And there's a bunch of other helpful PC building resources on there as well. And finally, if you wanna see one more way to do a $1,000 build, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.